Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all the inspiring stories why you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. My guest today is Nadia Babu. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Kiran. How are you today? I'm absolutely fine. And how are you doing, my lovely? Oh, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Feeling so much better. <laughs> so thank you for choosing to come on to the You're Not we Invisible After 50. <laughs> we have made it. Um, thank you for choosing to come on to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. So I'm going to get you to introduce yourself in one line or more to our listeners of who you are. Okay, well... As, as you mentioned, my name is Nadia Babu, and I am 55 years old, and I have recently become uh, visible again in the last 10 years. I am a communications profession- professional, uh, a, an image consultant, a mom, a wife, an arthritis warrior, I am, and I'm living my best life. I'm finally in my 50s and living my best life. I love that. And we're going to talk more about that as we move forward. So in this podcast, so thank you very much, first first of all, for that. In this podcast, we're going to cover your life story, the past, the present, and if there was a trigger point at 50. So let's begin. Of course, we'll go on to the future and and the bonuses, but let's begin um, in the past. Anywhere you want to start, anywhere, anything you want to tell, really, to our listeners about who you are and where you came from. Yes. So um, my so my background, I was born in South Africa, uh, but we migrated to Canada and when I was just a toddler. So I've grown up here. Um, this has always been my my home and um, had a very happy childhood. I have two older brothers, you know, my parents did, you know, to stay together um, for, oh my goodness, um, about 50 years of marriage. So, um, and God, God rest both their souls, but they, we had a fantastic uh, childhood. I can't complain. Um, I, when I got older, I've, always knew that I wanted to be in um, the beauty industry, um, help people to look good, to feel their best. So that's the career path that I started with right out of school and stuck with for my entire life. I, um, in my early 20s, I met my ex-husband and um, it was, he was much older than me. He was about 10 years older than me. And I found that that's sort of where my journey really began um, with really figuring out who I was and what my path was going to be for the future. So with my, with my ex-husband, because there was such an age gap, I didn't see it at the time, but I think I started to look at him as uh, another type of father figure. Mm -hmm. And I kind of looked to him for guidance to help help me mature, you know, help me become the woman I'm supposed to be without giving myself enough credit for becoming that woman on my own. Mm -hmm. And I found that, you know, at the beginning, things were great. Um, I had a career, a corporate career in the beauty industry, and things were going very well. And, um, And it was just about 
just before, a year before my son was born, my first child was born, we bought our first house. We had just bought our house. And uh, the next, about six months later, I got laid off from my job. Okay, not great timing. No, not great timing. Got laid off from my job and just devastated. Didn't know what I was going to do. Um, the, The economy was kind of going through, you know, a little bit of turmoil at that time. So I was struggling to find a job. So somebody had suggested to me, well, why don't you start your own business? Why don't you become an image consultant? And I thought, well, what is that? I've never heard of that before. And she said, it is a combination of all of my skills. She said, you're in beauty and fashion. And I have a background in PR and communication. So they said, it's a blend of both of them because you help people to look their best, to build their confidence, their communication skills and build a brand for them. So I thought, wow, that sounds fantastic. So let me do that. So I started a business. I started a consulting business. It was um, the early 2000s. It was going really well. And I was slowly starting to build business, building some corporate clients. And I was enjoying myself. And, uh, you know, and as you know, and all the entrepreneurs out there know, it's not always consistent, you know, pay, right? Not getting that steady paycheck from the corporate, you know, corporations anymore. So, you know, things would fluctuate. And my my husband at the time was very much, he was a government uh, employee. So he had a good steady job, good benefits and all of that. And he, his personality was very much one of stability, mm. you know, no risk taking. We got to be careful. We have a house, we have a kid. We had you know, another child two years later and we never really fully supported me in that business. Okay. When the, when the slow times would happen, he would always say to me, well, why don't you just go out and get a real job? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of saying, okay, what can we do to help you build a business again? How can I support you? How can I help you grow? It would always just be leave this nonsense and do what you're supposed to be doing and take care of your family. Interesting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, so we, we had a bit of struggle with that between the two of us because I really loved what I was doing and I knew I could get back up on my feet. But then, of course, 2008 hit, the recession hit, and I lost about 75% of my clients because my services now were seen as a luxury versus a necessity, and everybody was cutting back. So it was devastating. I was devastated. I didn't know what I was going to do. And of course, he came back to me and like, you see? Yeah, told you. You I told you, you need to go get a real job now. And I tried for a little bit to rebuild, but it was tough. It was a very tough time. You know, everybody knows that all around the world. Everybody knows that. So I did. I ended up taking uh, another corporate job, a very administrative job. I was not happy by any means. It was not what I felt I was meant to do. But in my mind, I kept telling myself, this is the right thing to do because you have to take care of your family. You have responsibilities, Nadia. I mean, come on. Yeah. So... We continued like that for a few years. Um, Every time I tried to kind of jump back into things, he would just um, demotivate me. Uh, It was, and we just continued to to fight and fight and the tension just got worse. And I was unhappy for a very long time. And we were just, we had become roommates. We weren't really husband and wife anymore. We were just kind of, I was just tolerating him. But I was sticking it out because I had two young kids. And then in the um, in January of 2013, my mom passed away. And at this time now, um, I was 45 years old. So I wasn't quite in my 50s yet, but I was 45. And I had my kids were 10 and 12. And when my mom passed away, it, it triggered me. It was that was when I thought to myself, what are you doing? Yeah, You know, life is too short. And I know, you know, my mom, when I spoke to her before she passed, she would always, you know, check the fur only as all moms do. She would always ask, are you happy? You know, Mm -hmm. are you happy? How are things going? Are you happy? Because moms can always sense when things are Absolutely. (laughs) They can, can't they? Yes. And sorry for your loss of your mom, because I know how that feels. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And 
and my mom and I were very close and we would talk all the time. And, and um, so when she passed, it was just, it just hit me. Like, you can't, I can't live like this anymore. This is ridiculous. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not even sleeping in the same room as my husband. You know, what kind of example is that setting for the kids? I keep saying I'm doing it for the kids, but what is that showing them about how marriage is supposed to be? Like, that's not what it's supposed to be. So it took me a few months, but I worked up the courage and I left. And I walked away from my house. I left my, I left my kids with my husband because I didn't want to uproot them from their, their neighborhood, their, their, their only home that they knew. And I moved in with family and until I could figure out, get myself on my feet. And that was the hardest thing that I ever did. Just to- it's probably the <laughs> hardest thing that you did, Nadia, because I mean, I totally understand. And I'm so um, grateful for the fact that you've opened up so much about, you know, sharing, um, not sharing a, a, a room and what example are you setting for, for your children? Because I equally went through a marriage like that. And it is dreadful because you want to stay in a marriage because it's a marriage and you feel yes. that it's your duty. Yet, yes, there's a, so much part of you that's torn because it's not a marriage it, per se. And you've and what example are you setting to your children about future relationships? And what mm-hmm. are they going to be living with going forward? So you, yes. I totally understand that, you know, you had to make a decision because equally I made a decision of the same. So thank you for being so open and honest about that because it's it's something to declare to the world, isn't it, really? Um, it- but um Thank you. So please carry on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I think it's, you know, it is important to just, and I've become very comfortable in saying it out loud and sharing it because, you know, you, because look, look, you and I have both gone through this. There's so many people out there who are going through it, who have been through something like this. And at the time you feel so alone. You think that you're the only one and you wonder, you, you know, you feel so guilty and so bad about how did you get yourself into this situation you should have known better what didn't you do right you know what could you have done better and all these questions go through your mind and really it's just life this is just you know this you we had to go through this there was a lesson that we were meant to learn and that's the reason we're going through this is to help us grow, to learn what we were supposed to learn. And I truly do believe that people come into our lives for seasons and for reasons. And not everybody who you know we met from childhood and onward is supposed to be with us right up until the end. Yeah, you think right? you kind of hope that and you, you kind of have that image of that of but and, and the want and desire of that, but it's not the case. And you're yeah. right, you know, I mean, you have to let these people go. And <laughs> like you, I've let so many people go because <laughs> it was good for me. So, yeah, you have to move on. Yeah. And you as you said, to. learn from that. So carry yes. on. So you kind Absolutely. of left your marriage. <clears throat> yeah, I did. Um, it took me a long time to really um, get back to me because I struggled so much with whether or not I was making the right decision. And, and, um, but I found that the more I was away from my husband, the more strength I gained. I started to feel better about myself. I started to reconnect with that woman that I knew so long ago who started that business, who, you know, even prior to that was working her way up the corporate ladder and, you know, doing what she needed to do to make things happen and to get what she wanted. And I started to reconnect with her. I even started when I was with my husband is to go back a little bit. I noticed that I was taking on some of his traits. You know how sometimes married mm-hmm. people do, right? We start to become like each other, but it was so beyond who I was. I was always, you know, a bit of a rebel, a bit of a free spirit, even from when I was younger. And I found myself really toning down with him from everything from the way I looked, you know, my hairstyle, my way of dressing, to the way I spoke, to even my mannerisms, everything. I was just so conservative. And once I was out of that relationship for a couple of years, I started to go back to being a little bolder you know, trying something different and, 
and just stepping outside my box. And I felt so much more comfortable. I felt so much more free. I was feeling more and more like myself because that's who I was. You know, I wasn't this, you know, I wasn't this, you know, covered up matronly person who only didn't, you know, said and did the right things. I pushed, you know, I started pushing the boundaries again and it felt amazing. It felt, feels really quite liberating because, you know, when you said rebel, yeah. I thought, oh, she's a woman like me, right? <laughs> and then when you're in that relationship and with in people um, around you who are kind of the same as like say your ex and and that that um, mm-hmm. community, you become so much part of that, and you you kind of dumb down in a way. And I felt equally, I did, did that you? as well. And you realize way after when you come out of all of that, as you've as you've just said, Nadia, is that you realize who you were, what the true essence of you is, and then you become familiar with that person. It's like going back home, right? It's going back home and going, yeah that's who that person is and that and that's who I'm comfortable with so I'm really glad that you said rebel because I too my girl I'm that so I'm I'm glad that you are as well equally so one a like sees another like so we know where we're coming from (laughs) yeah absolutely absolutely so I after you know after a few years I got um I you know I I sort of got back on my feet. Um, I got myself a little place that where I could, um, you know, have my kids come over, be with me. Um, we could start reconnecting because there was a lot of, you know, that is you know, a whole other story where you're trying to reconnect after a divorce or during a divorce and trying to still maintain a healthy relationship with your kids when they have all kinds of questions. And, you know, we went through our own struggles ourselves, but Um, it took a while, but now we're, you know, we're back to a very healthy place with both my children. They're both grown now. They're both, um, one is 25 and the other is 23. And, um, you know, we've really come, come to a place where we are really good friends again. And, you know, if you ask my kids, do you think your mom and dad should have stayed together? And they will both say, no, Mm -hmm. absolutely not. And they have both mentioned to me that they see the difference in me they are very happy with who they see now and they both tell me mom this is you like you're this is your authentic you this is really who you truly are supposed to be and they see it and they love it and you know and I feel you know so grateful for that because first like I said for so long I struggled to thinking am I making the right decision but kids are very intuitive. They know what's going on. Absolutely. And I think also, if, you know, you've got to make yourself happy. And it's not selfish. It's kind of, you know, survival and for you to thrive. Yes. And it's all of those things. And if you're in a happy place, then only can you then make somebody else happy. And if they see yes. you happy, it just infiltrates them as well, doesn't it? It passes on. It, 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 it's by osmosis that they see you happy. But if you're in an unhappy marriage and you're miserable, no one wants to see that. And nobody wants to be in that that environment. My kids are exactly the same. You know, my kids are with me, you know, 110%. And I think it's because I've become my own person like you. You become mm-hmm. your own person and you know that no one's going to judge you. And if they do, you don't care, right? <laughs> If you can do your own thing, that's what you like, you know, and you're you're in a very much different and happier place. So it can only be positive and positive for people who are around you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, And during this time, I also met a new love in my life. I he was finalizing his divorce and I was just uh, beginning mine. And I knew in the back of my mind that this is who I'm supposed to be with. And because everything just clicked, we understood each other. He was, he's the complete opposite of my ex (laughs) in every way, shape and form. Um, And, but I was hesitant with starting something with him. Uh, A really heavy relationship with him because you're, I'm thinking, no, 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 no. I don't want this to be a rebound. I don't want this to be, you know, I just came out of something so heavy. I don't want to get into something heavy. So I kept him at bay for a very long time. (laughs) And, um, but he was quite persistent and 
we eventually blossomed and we've been together for for about 10 years now and it's been amazing you oh know, that it's been, sounds so good it's absolutely amazing and we're our families are you know he has two daughters himself and we're you know everybody is really great together they call each other brothers and sisters you know we do like this for instance tomorrow we've all got a nice big family outing together and it's great it's great to to finally be in a place where and be with somebody who appreciates who i am mm -hmm. and you know what um honors you know all my flaws all my you know my my all my strengths and you know really tries to help bring out the best in me and even with my flaws he helps to to call me out you know mm -hmm. when sometimes we need to be called out on things sometimes we need to be just you know but always done in a positive way never to never putting me down never about um, you know, trying to diminish me or demoralize me. It's more about, hey, not you better just catch yourself on that one. And I feel very comfortable that I can reciprocate because with my ex, I never felt comfortable doing that because I thought if I, you say something, it's just going to blow up into something else. Mm -hmm. Whereas with my husband, Richard and, and I now, we can, you know, we'll, we'll have our spats like any couple, but at the end of the day, it's like, okay, we're cool. We're cool. Yeah. May take us a little, you know, may take me a little longer sometimes to cool down. <laughs> but at the end, I know we're good. We're good. And there's not going to be any kind of anything held against me later on either. You know, my ex was someone who used to do that, would bring back things from the past. Yeah. You know, those yeah, yeah. people remember yeah. when you did that. And, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's like, no, no, no. We go through it. We get, you know, we go through it, we let it out and it's over and, you, and that's, and you don't bring it back up. You just continue to move forward. And I think it's because, you know, he's been gone, he's gone through whatever he's gone through. So he understands one type of relationship. And I think people have a learning from that and go, okay, I want to meet somebody. And just by chance, you meet somebody by, you know, who are different. I mean, I haven't met anybody um, in the time that I left my ex um, maybe because I haven't gone looking, right? But that's besides the point. But the fact is, whoever I do meet in the future certainly would have to be the total 100, 360 degree opposite to your previous to your previous person that you had in your yeah. life. And I think that's what you go for something or someone who's different to that, which is healthy because then you know the first type of person didn't suit your personality, and didn't work with you, kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. But let me so tell you, Kira, they they come around when you're not looking though. <laughs> yeah they do don't they I have no idea but never mind that's besides the point this is about you so <laughs> so let's talk about your work you you know the the present so mm -hmm. what are you currently doing so currently um I I am I am managing I'm a salon and spa manager at a luxury health club establishment um a big corporation that has many locations throughout North America um, so uh, here in Canada, there's three locations and I manage um, the biggest location in a city called Mississauga. If there's any Canadians out there watching um, who are from the Ontario area, you might know Mississauga. And um, so I've been doing this. I've been with the company now for seven years um, and in this role for uh, almost two years now and enjoying it, still able uh, to do what I love doing, which is helping people to look good, to feel good about themselves. Um, it's a very challenging a position for me because um, in my past roles, I um, never managed uh, a business um, to this extent where um, like revenue wise, where um, by the end of this year, we're anticipating you having brought in almost a million dollars in revenue for this particular salon. So the, you know, everything's much bigger on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite exciting, uh, very challenging for me. My first opportunity to manage people. I've always managed myself. I've always managed projects. Um, so it's exciting because, you know, even now in, you know, in my fifties, there's still a lot of growth. 
like managing people, even though I've always worked with people, consulted with people, coached people, it was never, this is a little different. Mm -hmm. But I found that this in this role, I was able to use those that skill set from my consulting business to help me with my with my team, you know, as far as coaching and motivating and all of that. So it's been a a huge learning curve, but it's been very exciting. And um, and I'm glad I'm I'm appreciative of the growth that I'm able to, you know, to still happen even at this point in my career. That's absolutely brilliant. But you're also on social media, are you not? (laughs) <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I'm actually at a point where I'm trying to make a little bit of a comeback. So um, my business, my consulting business, my image and branding business was going, um, I started to rebuild it in uh, during COVID. I uh, started a program, I um, was doing some of that while we were off because up here in Canada, Um, we were shut down for a good year and a half completely. Mm -hmm. So I was out of work. So I was still with this corporation I'm with now, but I was, we were completely shut down. Um, uh, The beauty industry was one of the last industries to go back out and reopen just because we were so, you know, it's all about personal touch. So, and Canada was very uh, conservative on how they rolled back out after COVID. But during COVID, I um, re- started my business online. Um, I did, um, it was all obviously on, all on Zoom and I would coach people on um, how to build their personal brand. So we would start by building a message, you know, what is their messaging? Mm-hmm. What is their goal? What is their vision? You know, really trying to get a grasp of what what it is they they, they want to be, how it is they want to be seen and how we're gonna make that happen. And then we take a look at their communication skills. So both their verbal, nonverbal communication skills, presentation skills, if that's something that they needed for their particular career uh, or business. And the styling was also the final piece of it. Um, So the, the, the outer packaging is very important. A lot of people don't realize that it's our first perception of people, right? It's our yeah. first impression of how people look. As much as we want to always say, oh, no, no, I don't judge a book by its cover. Um, you know, I always look to the, the person inside. Yes, eventually you do. But whenever we meet everybody, it's always yeah. that packaging. And so it's very important that that outer packaging expresses who you really are inside. And it tells people, how you want to be treated and how you want to be respected and how they should, you know, how they should look to you. So it's very important that outer packaging. So, and I make sure that my program is a combination of everything. Because you can't have one. I mean, absolutely. It has to be a total package. It has to be how you sound, how you present yourself and how you look, you know, and that look is your own kind of personal kind of take on it. But yes, yeah. I think all of it's important because people do judge when they first see you of, of you know, who they, they think you are, right? So mm-hmm. I think it's really important. And, you know, I've always been interested. Well, I come from a family that's always been in fashion. Um, I'm in, interested in fashion, um, but my business isn't about that at the moment and probably will be in the future in some way or form. But the fact is, yes, I think it's really important that you present yourself in a in a particular way you know um, as a business as an individual to the world and and you're also doing that on on social media yes yes so I on social media especially and I've always been focused um you know on on women over 40 over 50 and because so much on social media what's out there right now is you know is not for us it's for the younger generations and you know, it's and I find that and what I really want to do is to, you know, is to break down the myths of being over 50. You know, there's there's so much that that people think about, especially younger generations, you know, um, when they think when, as soon as you tell somebody you're over 50, it's it's, you know, it's like you're speaking a different language. They can't, all of a sudden they disconnect with you. They don't understand. And I think as well, um, when we, as we get older, we're a very different 50 
than what our moms were, right? Than what our grandmothers were. It's completely different. It's, um, and we are not doing the same things that the past generations were doing at this age. We have gone so far beyond, right? So many of us now at this age, you know, if it was our parents' generation would be starting to think about retirement, right? Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, they think about starting to wind down their careers, Whereas now we're starting to think about what's next. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And what's I also next? think I also think that there's a tide that's turning because there's a lot of 50 year olds who are showing up on social media, you know, showing their grays, you know, being influencers, you know, agencies are taking on more women. It's slow, but it's going that way. Yeah. And I think the more we do this, the more we are out there showing the world that you're not a what is a typical 50 year old? I mean, I'm 60 nearly right <laughs> I'll be 60 next March and I wouldn't have thought of starting a podcast at 57 or 58 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and here I am and I'm doing something totally different to what my my exactly what you're saying that you know our parents grandparents would be retiring or give you know crocheting or doing something else and <laughs> But and it's just like that's okay for them. It's fine. Yes. If that's what you want to do. It's a choice. It's a choice that one makes. But when you know that you have got the energy and you're vibrant and you've got the zest for life, then why not go out there and create something and and influence whatever way you influence somebody in a different way, so that future generations coming up can say, oh. Oh, about well, 50. Look at these ladies who are enjoying themselves, who, who are dressing like yeah. that, or who are showing up like that, you know. And I think yes. this is what it's about. We are the trailblazers for all the generations that are coming up behind us. And the more women who come forward and show themselves up, the more, the quicker it will change. And this, this argument about ageism will eventually just go away right just yeah. fade Wouldn't away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would be wonderful if that did if it did but it, it's 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 so in, it's it just shocks me sometimes and I find it even not even from other people who aren't I find it from women in their 50s who are still you know um you know feeding into the stereotypes mm. and I think wow ladies like do you why are you doing this? Why are you, you know, what is, what is going on? Are you not feeling that confident about yourself? Is it something to do with your own self-esteem? Is it something to do with maybe how you were raised? And this is what, how you were taught women in their fifties should be behaving. And this is what we're supposed to be doing. Is it just, you know, so societal norms that, you know, have been ingrained in your head. And when people, when people meet me and for, and fig, you know, find what I tell them about, you know, how old I am, which I am never, I never hold back on my age, you know, when people start to make jokes about, oh, you know, you're, we're a woman of a certain age. It's like, no, I'm 55. Yeah. <laughs> I am. And that certain age is fine by me. You know, I'm 59. Yeah. I, and I shout it from the rooftops. It's okay. Yeah. You know, I'm proud of being 59, you know, I'm, and why yeah. shy away? I mean, you're actually being the example. You're showing up as a 59 year old person mm -hmm. or a 55 year old woman mm -hmm. as you are again okay, this is me this is what 55 or 59 looks like nowadays yeah. or any other version of any other woman who comes forward and I think that is really really healthy mm -hmm. and you know what and I feel like and women have told me that you know they find it very inspiring and they that that I am the way I am and that I'm feeling so comfortable and just saying it and being who I am. And, you know, some of them will say to me, Oh, I could, I could never do it. I could never be like you. And I couldn't, you know, and I think you, you could be whatever you want to be. You Absolutely. know, it's, up to you. it's entirely up to you. It's not anybody else's decision. You know, it's not, nobody else has any say in who you are or how you live your life. I mean, yes, we all have to, you know, be responsible adults and do what we have to do. Um, but in the end, I feel, you know, so, so strongly about now that I'm, you know, at this age, and my kids are grown, that, you know, I, it's time for me, it's time to get back to me, this is all about me now, 
You know, oh, absolutely. I've, I've done my job. My kids are good. You know what I mean? That I've raised them well. They're great. They're great young adults. They're doing their thing. They're working. They're building businesses. They're both entrepreneurs. They're doing their thing. They're happy. So if they're happy, I've done my job in that respect. And now it's time to focus on me. I find a lot of women who, um, who have focused on, when we focus on our kids for so many years, we find that like that was what defined us. That was all they know. And then they find themselves very lost now because now my kids don't need me anymore. You know, and so what do I do? You just kind of look over to the person lying with <laughs> lying in bed next to you and you think, is this it? Like mm-hmm. what else is there? And they get, they are very lost and they don't know how to move forward because raising a family was what defined them for so many years. And, and so, and I know a lot of people, um, get demotivated by that they get depressed because they just feel like they lost their sense of self but i feel like it's an opportunity now to find something new for you and to appreciate yourself and give back to yourself a little bit because we have given to our families for so many years right women we always go we are always the ones who are giving and giving and giving not to say that the men in our lives you know don't support their families and aren't great fathers and all of that but we are always going above and beyond. That's just the way it's always been. That's just nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's why it's so important that we start to take back some of that and appreciate ourselves and let everybody else around us appreciate us too. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think you're totally right, Nadia, because, you know, my children are leaving home. I'm glad I've started what I've started. I have a mission. I have a purpose. I have a, a want. I have a desire to get up, you know, even though they've left, you know, the, the house, the home and they've got their own lives you have something to do and I think having a purpose is so important and you know rather than just losing yourself and and wondering what you're going to be doing next you know (laughs) to have something in your hand or think about something before that time comes is really good and finding yourself like what is it that I want to do what is it that I like what would I you know wish to do etc and and just going with that and as you you're also right in terms of you know thinking about yourself for a change thinking about who you are because we've given so much to our families you know to our children to our partners in the past and Mm -hmm. um you know it's time to kind of give something back to yourself Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's really what I I strive to do when I'm working with my clients and now that I'm rebuilding my business. And if you you know, look through my Instagram and you see some of, um, you know, see some of the the lives and the videos that I've done in the past or any of my posts, it's always about, you know, empowerment and, and, and just, you know, doing for you and not, not letting anybody you know, dictate your life to you anymore, you know, just be you, do you, and that's all there is to it. And enjoy, just enjoy. Absolutely. Thank you for that. So we're now going to go to a commercial break. And when we're back, we're going to talk about the future and what that looks like, and also the bonus part of the podcast. Did you know that You're Not Invisible After 50 is not just about a highly acclaimed global podcast? Our mission is to empower all women, regardless of colour, creed, class and culture across all countries and continents. So we have two empowering courses for you. A free masterclass, Building a Life You Love, Creating Your Own Path After 50. This transformative masterclass is one that you've been waiting for. Are you ready to seize life after 50 like never before? Well, say goodbye to feeling stuck and say hello to the life you love. Don't let age define your limits. Let it ignite your possibilities. This transformative masterclass is your ticket to a vibrant and fulfilling future. But that's not all. Coming in November, we have our innovative introductory business course, Greater Gold. In today's business world, Age should never be a barrier to success. Say goodbye to age-related stereotypes and hello to unstoppable success. Our half-day course will equip you with the skills and confidence you need to conquer the business world. 
Discover the true values of your experience. Reinvent yourself, stay competitive, and master the art of self-presentation. It's time to turn your grey into gold. Don't wait. Your future is brighter than ever. Visit our website and check out our courses geared to propel you to the next level. So embrace your age, utilize your wisdom and experience and own your success. Spots are limited. Also, we have other wonderful products launching in the new year. So keep a watch on our social media posts and all details can be found on our website www.youarenotinvisibleafter50.com Let's move on and mm -hmm. talk about the future. So tell me what's on the horizon for you and what's happening, what's happening going forward. I want to really relaunch my business. I want to relaunch the coaching business. I'm at the moment um, developing a, a new program. I had a signature program uh, that I had developed during COVID. So I am tweaking that program right now. And I want to um, hopefully go live with it um, probably in the next couple of months, uh, open it back up. I'm going starting to create uh, a new website, give myself a, a little bit of a brand makeover uh, as I relaunch. And um, because I really, I really do enjoy it and I miss it. I miss, even though um, my job right now still gets me involved with people and, you know, like I said, I'm still helping people to look good. I'm not the one who's actually doing a lot of it. I'm kind of mm -hmm. managing the operations where I am now, but I'm not deep into um, the actual work. And I really miss that. I really miss that. And so I want to get back and create, get back to up and running my coaching business and eventually, um, you know, and eventually starting to um, build that succession plan out of my corporation and get back to my, to my own business and just do that full time. So that's Fabulous. what I'm hoping. Yeah. That sounds really, so good. Yes, I really do. And hopefully my employer is not watching this, but I really do want to, to be out of out of the corporate world in the next five years. You know, I don't want to be in there beyond 60. I want to be on my own. Like That's my goal to be out and, and just be doing myself and getting back to me and doing everything on my own terms. Absolutely. I think it's a great place to be. I mean, you know, me getting up at nine or 10 or eight or seven, pleasing myself each day, working probably every single day of the week, you can do things your own way. And I think that's what's yes. sort of refreshing about being your own boss and yes. having your life in your own hands because you've worked for other people. You've been there, done that, done the day, you know, <laughs> the, the daily grind, you know, been in that kind of corporate environment. But yes, it's so much more pleasurable when you're doing it for yourself <laughs> and you can yes. dictate how everything works fabulous and yeah. I'm wishing you all the best and of course you know people can find you yeah. on social media they can you know got you've got your website coming up so you can send me the details and we can always mm -hmm. put that up for you right so let's move on my friend let's move on to the tip bonus part of this podcast so the five tips that you would give to anyone who's under 50 under 50 so my five tips um the first one is don't don't burn yourself out too early okay make sure that the journey is steady and smooth mm -hmm. because the best is yet to come it really is so don't you know that's i see so i i see everybody hustling which i i you know i appreciate you know i respect but just know just don't think you have to make everything happen at once mm -hmm. it, it I think when we're younger, that's how we feel. We have to have it now. We have to have it all. And we got to have it soon. Like it's got to be now. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got to have everything. And life doesn't work that way. And it does not mean that you are a failure. If it's not coming to you instantaneously, you've got to give yourself time. You got to be patient with yourself and, you know, don't burn yourself out too early in life because the best is yet to come. Absolutely. Fabulous. Um, it's important that you are your authentic self. 
Never lose sight of who you are. Don't let anybody else tell you who you should be, what you should be doing. Take advice from mentors and all of that. Yes, absolutely. But don't let anybody dictate to you what you should be doing for for you. Mm -hmm. You are the only one who knows what's best for you. And remember that. Um, Number three would be don't let your past define you. So just because maybe when you were younger and you didn't do well in school, you know, that's not going to define your ability to be a great entrepreneur. It's not going to define your ability to do well in the, in the corporate world. Um, you know, if you had a tough childhood, that doesn't mean that, you know, your adult life is just is going to be negative at all. I mean, there's so many success stories about people who have turned around their lives. So don't let the past define you keep moving forward just keep moving forward and um don't let anybody diminish your power Mm -hmm. kind of same so much of people dictating um your life but don't let anybody diminish your power because it can happen when we're younger right we're looking to older people you know um if we feel they're more uh experienced we feel that they know better than we do And even with relationships, right, Um, when you're younger and you look to your partner and you think, oh, you know, he or she is just the the be all and end all. And, you know, I'm going to do anything I can to keep, you know, keep them and all of that. But they're breaking you down while you're trying to do that. And don't let anybody ever take away your power. If you should always be in any relationship that you are in, it should be one that is strengthening you Mm -hmm. and making you better and making you feel empowered and making you feel confident and good about yourself. If someone doesn't make you feel good about yourself, that's when you got to go. And that applies right across the board, right? It can't not for somebody who's younger, but anybody who's older as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them go. Even if it's your, you know, you know, a family member, if that family member is toxic, You know, you might have to give yourself some distance for them, not necessarily shut them out of your life completely, but you might need to know how to set some boundaries so that they don't, you know, intoxicate you like that. Absolutely. And finally, listen to your gut. Listen to your gut. Okay. You, you, you know, you know, you, you've got it in you. You've got the instinct. I, I mean, so many times I, I didn't listen to my gut. You know, I went with what everybody else was saying. And and I, even though deep down, I felt it like, no, I should do this. I should do this or I shouldn't do this. But, you know, listen, you feed into peer pressure. um, You feed into peer peer pressure. And especially when you, even when you're older, we still feed into peer peer pressure. But trust your gut. Trust your gut. Go with your. I don't feed into peer pressure. Mm -mm, Not me. (laughs) Uh -uh. Don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Good for you. And my, my oh, kids say, God. yeah, you kind of you know, just walk to your own beat or you do things to your own beat. I just do what I want, right? And I feel good about it. No peer pressure that's here, my amazing. friend. That's <laughs> amazing. That's great. Oh. And that's something that's so hard to do. It's so hard to do. Peer pressure is, oh, it can be very overpowering sometimes. It's probably because I knocked um, everybody out of my, uh, from my past, <laughs> out to the sides, right? <laughs> Cut them off. <laughs> Hence, I have no peer pressure now. <laughs> but move on. Let's do the three tips for anybody who's over 50. <laughs> okay. So the three for uh, over, over 50. So one is a repeat. Um, be authentically you. That is just for everybody, every age from, you know, one day old to a hundred years old, just be authentically you. And you're going to go through phases when you're going to try to be other people. Um, but just try it out, see if it fits, you know, but always come back to being you always come back to being you because nobody, the people who love you just want you to be you. They don't want you to try and be somebody else either. You know, the people who really matter in your life, that's who they want, you know, and they get very annoyed with you when you start to become somebody else. <laughs> Yeah, and it's too much of an effort, right, to be someone else, putting all these different facades. I mean, just like, no, no, can't be, can't be doing with this anymore. And I think we've done all of that in the past, really, put different kind of, you know, masks on. And it's about yeah. being, just showing up as, you, as yourself. Yeah. And whether people accept you or not, it's not your problem, you know. 
as long as you can go to bed at night, happy in yourself, being content of who you are and what and how you're showing up. I think that's the key thing, really. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, over 50, we ladies, we need to put ourselves first. Put yourself first. Stop worrying about, you know, everybody else. And is this person, you know, is, you know, the kids, when you have grown kids, don't worry about what's going on in their lives. They're, they're, they're grown people. You raise them well. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> They'll come to you if they need help. But start to put yourself first and get your, get you know, take care of your own business first. You know, if you are a career woman or you're building, you're an entrepreneur, you know, handle your business, handle your business and, and just, you know, take and take care of your, um, your mental, you know, spiritual, physical health as well first, because that's the most important thing is because we don't have our, you know, our health, we have nothing. And then we're not Mm -hmm. able to take care of anybody else. You know, we're going to have to rely on them now to take care of us. Mm. So if that's something you really don't want to happen, then you got to take care of yourself. You got to put the time in and, you know, do whatever it is. Go take that walk, you know, go hit the gym, you know, go for that spa day. Mm -hmm. Do, you know, go for that girl's night out or whatever it is that you need to do. But you got to do that first and, you know, and just let everybody know that this is what's happening. And if you got a problem with it, well, too bad. You know, you can come talk to me about your problem, you know, about the problems at the, you know, when I'm going out and, and join me for a drink with the girls and talk to me about the problem, <laughs> but I'm getting to enjoy myself right now. <laughs> Fabulous. And the last yeah. one? Last one is um, kind of similar again, is don't diminish your light. Shine our lights and we shine our light brightly. It inspires others to do the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we should never try to humble ourselves or, you know, shy away from anything. You know, you be you and you be bold and you be out there and speak your mind and, you know, and do what you need to do to, you know, to further yourself because it will inspire others to do the same. It really does. Never, ever diminish that light, you know, make it shine bright, as bright as possible and shine it over everybody so they can feel that warmth, they can feel the energy, and then they can go out and do the same. Absolutely. Totally agree with you on that. And you're shining your light and it's fabulous. So please keep on shining. And I just like to say thank you for your time today. It's been a wonderful conversation. I just loved it. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And I, I, you know, it's such, I was such an honor for you to invite me onto the show. I'm so excited. I was so nervous. <laughs> oh, you did it exceptionally well. I think we all get nervous, you know, no matter who you are and where you are, you know, you know, we all get nervous, but it, it's just been, but the, the fact is, Nadia, it's about being authentic, right? So whether you're nervous yeah. or not, you're just showing up as yourself. And thank you for showing up as you today. It's been wonderful and an honor thank you so much i appreciate it i appreciate your time and um you know thank you again and for everybody out there you know thank you so much for tuning in absolutely thank you very much thank you for listening to you are not invisible after 50 podcast if you want to hear more from some amazing women who are over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact then don't forget to follow us right here on apple podcasts or Spotify. Remember to subscribe, rate, comment and share with other women through your social media. Let's spread the word across the world that you don't have to be invisible after 50. Check out our other services on www.you'renotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. And always remember that life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. But wait, we have even more to offer. Join us and tune in to our other podcast, Shamelessly Untamed, a transformative series that encourages you to embrace your true self and celebrate your uniqueness. Make sure to subscribe to Shamelessly Untamed podcast on other podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to rate, comment and share with anyone who can benefit from its content. Explore our additional services at www 
roaringahead.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. We look forward to you connecting with us. Thank you.